Welcome back everyone. I had a question in the comments about adding a loop or a hole into certain models. So I will give you a really quick way of doing it. Um, so right now we have this um, ghost here. This is the one with the feet. And let's say we wanted to effectively make it a key chain. So we're gonna add um, a hoop to this. Uh, there's a few ways you can do this, um, but I'm going to give you the easiest way. Uh, we're going to get a, um, a torus or a donut, and there's a few ways you can do that. You can uh, use a program like Tinkercad, in which case you can um, you know, create an account. It's free. Uh, grab the little tube, drop it in. You actually don't have to do anything fancy here. Uh, then you can, of course, export this out, and you can uh, export it out as an object file or an STL file. Uh, doesn't really matter which. So we will just do an STL. And from here, that file, uh, go to downloads. I'm just going to drag this into our slicer. And there's our, our Taurus. The other option is you can pretty much find this on, um, pretty much most sites will have it where you can get a Taurus shape. Um, doesn't have to be anything fancy. So this is found on Cult 3D, it's free. I'll leave a link in the description. All right, so now that we have this, um, you're pretty much asking yourself, how do we add this to uh, our little ghost friend here? And when you add two separate items inside of your slicer, uh, just bringing it up won't work because it'll snap to plate. Uh, so the way that you would fix that, you have two options. You could either right click, you can add the part, um, load the part, and then it would add it into here. But since I just dragged the torus into uh, the slicer without adding it, we now have to add it. So the easiest way to do that, um, you can actually hold control and click on both of these or hold shift, highlight both of these, but effectively we're just going to assemble these. So when you assemble them, um, this is all considered one model. So that means that you can now raise one part of this. Let's go to objects process. So here's our ghost here. Uh, so I can now raise this all by itself, and I can also raise this all by itself. Uh, let's go back to, there you go, uh, all by itself. Now, since we can now do that, we can start assembling. So we're going to actually, uh, we'll center this just to make it a little easier. So we'll center our ghost. We will then center our donut. And I'm actually just gonna rename this so we don't get confused here. All right, now right now it's kind of hidden. So all we're going to do here is, again, we selected the torus. We're gonna to use our move tool. We're gonna to bring this up. All right, so it kind of looks like an angels. And from here, we will then just rotate this. Um, so if you're looking at all your axes, we have our X axis z-axis and y-axis we're just going to do the um the x-axis 90 degrees you can do it manually or i'm just going to do it here so 90. now if that loop seems a little large you can shrink it so again make sure you select it here you can then go to our scale tool and you can pretty much make this as large or as small as you like so if we slice this now we've effectively have it where this guy will completely work fine and it will have a loop. Now, conversely, if we take this, we'll clone it. And I'll probably fix this up a little bit. It looks a little off center. Uh, so when we're on here, we can actually go to that torus and let's say we wanna make a hole. Uh, so we just right click, change type, negative and now what we've ended up having if you go to slice this we now basically have a loop here and a hole here so depending on how you want to thread this you can run something through here uh, since it's um, basically just a negative part now if you wanted to let's say add a loop i'm going to switch over to my next plate and it's pretty much the same idea. Let's go over to this, a familiar look. And this is actually even easier. So 
since we have um, uh, since we have this and we know what its uh, dimensions are, let's go to scale. Our z height is. Let's just make this one. Make it really simple. If you right click on this model, we will go to add part. We would then go to add. Uh, let's add a cylinder. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. We're going to make our z height one. So I uncheck uniform scale. So now it's the same height. Find a spot where you want to add it. And now we're floating, so we just have to bring this down. And just bring it down. And of course, you can adjust it accordingly. I'm going to slide this over just a smidge. And just remember from the last time we did this, anytime you click over here, we'll actually uh, throw you off. So just make sure you're selecting the piece you want to control. All right, and let's actually do a quick uh, slice to see how this looks. All right, so that's fine. Now we're gonna um, put a hole through this. So we'll go back to prepare. Uh, we will right click again. We will add a negative part. We will do a cylinder. And we're going to move this over. And I'm just going to, like I said, like with a lot of my stuff, it's going to eyeball it. So from here, we will just move this over. And we can actually extend this out so we can make our Z height higher. Since it's a negative part, it doesn't really matter. Um, but let's do our move tool first. Again, make sure that you've selected here. And we can bring this down until it pierces. The next time we slice, we now have a hole. And this is all proportional now. So if we were to take this and then shrink it down, we can shrink all this down. And now what we'll have is a keychain with a hole. Now, this seems to be, we'll probably make this a little uh, thicker. Um, so as you, again, you shrink this proportionally, it may only be like one or two layers. So um, make sure that your Z height makes sense. So we will go to scale. Z height, we'll just make it one, nothing fancy. And of course, all right, so now when we slice that at a one, that's good. You can make this, you can adjust this as you, you see fit. So that's a quick and dirty way where you can actually um, add a loop uh, for keychains or ornaments or anything like that. Um, there's some other stuff that we can do with this. I won't bog you down, but this is the fast and dirty way of doing it. So you can basically just import a torus or a donut. Um, you can then assemble it to your model and then you can adjust it. So you could bring it up, bring it down. Uh, you could even, for instance, take this and then bring it into, let's say the bottom of this guy. So we can as well clone that. Let's uh, move you over. We'll take this assembly, that torus, and slide it over. Bring it down. And we'll actually rotate this so it is back to a horizontal one. And you can make this hole as large or as small as you want. Go to slice. And I'll just make sure we're not cutting into that shoe. All right, so that's a loop. And let's say if you just want a hole, again, you can uh, go back to, uh, let's go back to prepare. You'll notice I try to do all this in one take, so I'm just gonna power through. Uh, we're going to uh, right click, change type, change this to a negative part, hit OK. And now when we go to slice the plate, we now have a hole in, uh, so you can loop a keychain or something else through it. Um, actually, I might raise it up just a little bit since it cut through the bottom, I didn't realize. And you can adjust it accordingly. And slice again. All right, good. All right, so I'll print out a few of these and we'll see how it looks on the other side.
Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.